today because we're going to take a look at some areas that the church has been missing and we just want to reteach what the Holy Spirit says about the baptism of the Holy Ghost and I'm excited because when God finishes this series a lot of people are going to be fired up and filled with the Holy Ghost they will have good instruction on who the Holy Spirit is the Holy Ghost and how to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. And God wants to give you power. Praise God. We're going to talk about this thing called speaking in tongues. We're going to clarify this. And uh, we're going to correct a lot of the discrepancies that a lot of people have received. We welcome our international family, all of our friends in Kenya, Tanzania, Botswana, Uganda, uh, France, Germany, England, all of our international family, our friends in, in Jamaica. We praise the Lord. We thank God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Praise God. It is so good to wake up and know that Jesus is still on the throne. He has not abdicated his throne and he loves us. It is so good to know that Jesus loves you and he loves me and he loves everybody. And we just praise God. We thank God for the people all across this land and across the world who are going to get saved today. We thank God for those who are going to get the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit filled with the power of God. We thank God. Okay, if I can just get my reverberation. Let's try something. Get rid of this reverberation. Let me check both of my computers here to see what kind of volume we have. Anyhow, we'll talk and just hope everything goes well. Father God, we just commit everything to you. Lord, stretch your hand and touch the people who are listening today. Bless them. Meet every need. Lord, we pray that this message will go forth without interference, interruption, and that you will penetrate the hearts of the people, that they will receive, that they will hunger and thirst for you. Father God, we just love you. We cannot make it without you. I adore you. I exalt you. I love you, honor you, and praise you. Worship you, Holy Spirit. Thank you that greater are you in us than he that's in the world. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for dying on the cross, Lord Jesus, for everyone, everyone in the whole world. Thank you that you love all mankind. You are no respecter of persons. We thank you that you died for people of all colors, all locations, no matter where they are, and that you have made it possible that everyone can have eternal life the gift of salvation. And we thank you for your love. We thank you that you hung, bled, and died on the cross for us, that you became our propitiation. You substituted yourself on the cross. You who knew no sin, had not committed any sin, you became sin for us and took our sins, our combined sins and our individual sins into your body on the cross and you took the punishment that we deserve oh lord jesus we love you thank you so much for this great salvation thank you that you died for us thank you that you uh, were buried in the grave for three days and thank you that just as you said you rose again from the dead no other person ever did that Lord, we know you raised Lazarus from the dead, but that was only temporary. But no other uh, person calling themselves God or so-called God was able to raise themselves from the dead. Muhammad couldn't do it. Buddha couldn't do it. But you did it, Lord Jesus. And therefore, you are our Savior, our Lord, our God, and our King. And without doubt, we worship you. You are Lord forevermore. And so thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you gave us your Holy Spirit to live in us and to guide us into all truth. And now, Lord, as we teach on the Holy Ghost, we ask you, Holy Spirit, to anoint us, 
to teach the word of God and help the people to open their hearts to receive. Lord God, we pray that you'll make corrections in any area where people have been uh, poorly taught. We ask that you make any corrections in any areas where we have been walking in, in ignorance. We bless you and we praise you and we thank you, Father. And now, Lord, we just commit this ministry to you. We, we pray for men and women, boys and girls, all over the world that you'll bless them, Father. And we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, praise God. Today, I'm going to use this subject, questions and answers about the Holy Spirit baptism. My subject today is questions and answers about the Holy Spirit baptism. We're going to do some teaching today and answer a lot of your questions. And if there are questions we don't cover today, you send me an email, you send, send me a text message, and we'll be sure to try to get this. Here's the scenario. God wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost. He wants, and he wants, and listen, if you open up your heart, God wants to give you more than what you can imagine. It's not just speaking in tongues. Everybody does not speak in tongues. The Bible teaches us that. So let's get off that area of ignorance about speaking in tongues. Everybody does not speak in tongues, but some do. But God has gifts from the Holy Spirit that he wants to give to the body of Christ. And many people are missing out on the power of God and the gifts of God because they've been operating in ignorance. Some preacher told them, some pastor years ago, you don't need the Holy Ghost or, we, or this and that. And they missed train people, mistaught people. And so we're going to just go back to basics and teach what the word of God says. And we're going to ask you to open up your heart because God has a plan. He's got a plan. Our subject today is questions and answers on the Holy Spirit baptism. Probably by next week, we're going to be teaching and ministering on how to receive the Holy Ghost, how you can receive the Holy Ghost, and, and we're going to believe next week for signs and demonstrations in the Holy Spirit. And so we want to lay a foundation today uh, so that you can have something solid to stand on. Because uh, if you're like me, you were ignorantly trained by a lot of people. There are a lot of pastors who didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit. There are pastors who refuse to teach on the book of Acts. There are people who are so ignorant but they're preaching what they want to preach. But we want to look at the whole word of God, the Logos, and see what God says. You see, the Lord has a plan. He's got the plan. And the Lord's plan is he revealed his plan to his disciples. He said, it is expedient that I go away and I will send you the comforter. He will guide you into all truth. Jesus told his disciples before he was arrested and crucified, he said, it's expedient, it's necessary that I go away, but I will send you the comforter. He will guide you into all truth. Ladies and gentlemen, the church has missed it. We're talking about the body of Christ. Most people have missed it because they have been sitting under a lot of ignorance, uh, they have they have received ignorance, and Satan has used this thing about the baptism of the Holy Spirit to produce lies and dissension and division. But we're going to believe God. He's going to lay a groundwork so that you can have the power in your life. These are the last days. Jesus wants us to have power to live in these last days, and he wants us to have the power to serve him. So many believers are struggling to be Christians. So many pastors are struggling to be pastors. They're fighting against the deacons, the trustees, the steward board. They're wasting most of their time fighting with the people in the pews. I'm not going to waste my time with anybody in the pews who are contentious. I'm not going to waste my time with anybody online who has a spirit of contention. I'll just work around you. I'm going to do what God has for me to do. I'm not, not going to waste God's good time 
arguing with you about the Bible or arguing with you about some concept. I'm going to just stay in the presence of the Lord, preach what God says. I'll lay it out there. You can receive it and believe it. And if you receive it and believe it, the Holy Spirit will do a great work. So we're talking about the Holy Ghost baptism. Facebook family, uh, I know there are many of you who don't attend church anymore. We don't condemn you on this. I am so glad that you have tuned in to Back to Basics Online Church, live via Facebook. And I pray that my listeners, wherever you are, that you will go and get the videos that we put on my YouTube channel, Leroy Carter. Go to YouTube and you can get a refreshing on these lessons. God is making a way that you can get some good teaching and that you will be blessed and that you'll be strengthened and edified because these are the last days. Satan has pulled out all the plugs and he is coming against the church, but God wants you to have power. So we're going to do some answering of some questions today about the Holy Spirit baptism. Turn back with me to our foundational scripture, Ezekiel chapter 37. When you read Ezekiel chapter 37 and you hear about those dry bones, think about yourself. Oh, I know some of your Holy Ghost filled already. This will just be a refresher course for you. But a lot of you out there are dry bones. You're dry. You're struggling to be a Christian. You don't have any power. You're sick. You, 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 you're struggling getting healed. You're, you're, you're sitting under uh, uh, some, some poor ministries that don't teach the power of God. So just let's go back to Ezekiel 37 and, and see yourself as I see myself, one of those dry bones that Ezekiel talks about in this passage. And then we see where the Lord leads us because what God does with those dry bones as he uses his prophet Ezekiel to stir up those dry bones, what God does in Ezekiel chapter 37, he wants to do with you and me. And so if you'll just uh, open up your heart to the Lord, just open up your heart to the Lord and tune into the Holy Ghost and, 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 and give him your trust and your, your faith and watch what God will do. Ezekiel said in the 37th chapter, the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. He says, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. I'm reading from Ezekiel 37. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you and bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and ye shall live and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied, there was a noise and a shaking. Behold, a shaking and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Verse nine of Ezekiel 37 then he said unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, 
our bones are dried and our hope is lost and we are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, thus saith the Lord God, behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. And ye and I shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live. And I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. I read to the first 14 verses of Ezekiel chapter 37. This is our foundational scripture for this series. For the next several weeks, I'm going to be preaching on the Holy Ghost baptism. Next week, I don't want you to miss next week's message. Next week, next week's message will be how to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. We're going to believe that next week you're going to get filled with the Holy Ghost. We're going to believe that next week, those of you who are already filled will get filled again. Today, we're going to lay a foundation of Q&A, questions and answers about the Holy Ghost baptism. Why? Because the Holy Ghost said so many people are living in ignorance. So many people do not have the fullness of what I have for them. So many people are walking around powerless when I want them to have the power. And so we're going to do what the Holy Spirit does. I'm going to lay out the teaching. The Holy Ghost is going to do the work. If you receive, you're going to be changed, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to be changed. Your life is going to change. You'll receive power. You'll be able to do those things that God wants you to do. Praise God. God's going to break you loose from your chains and from captivity just by your hearing the word of God. Look at what he did in Ezekiel 37. Those bones, uh, toe bones over here and neck bones over here, and back bones over there and arm bones over there and skulls over there. They were disjointed, disconnected. They could not do anything. They were dead. They were dry and disconnected. And God took Ezekiel and said, son of man, can these bones live? And Ezekiel said, thou knowest, Lord, you know they can if you touch them. And ladies and gentlemen, these dry bones represent Israel. Uh, God said to Ezekiel, these bones represent the house of Israel. And now God is saying to us, these dry bones represent the church. First Baptist, ankle bones over here. Second Lutheran over here, toe bones. Uh, Pentecostals, knee bones over here. Uh, 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 Episcopalians, backbones over here, Roman Catholics, neck bones over here, none coming together, everybody trying to do their own thing and, and doing it without power because the Lord did not make us to be Lone Ranger Christians. He made us to be the body of Christ. And then in the book of Ephesians, he says, we're to be fitly joined together as the body of Christ. We represent Jesus Christ who has gone into glory. He has left us here to complete the work that he's assigned us to do. But while you got the Lutherans over here and the Methodists over here and the CMEs here and the AMEs here and the Southern Baptists here and the Northern Baptists here and the uh, American Baptists here and none of them are in agreement, none wanting to get along with one another, that is why the body is so corrupt and so pitiful and so weak. And the Lord Jesus is regurgitating in heaven at the little games we play because we think we know it all. The Baptists think they know it all. The Methodists think they know it all. We don't need this. We've got denominations that don't even preach about the Holy Ghost. We've got denominations. They don't even preach about prayer. And so the body of Christ is scattered. And Satan is having a good time because there's no unity in the body. There's no connection. But the Lord Jesus Christ wants to connect the body. He wants to raise up the dry bones. He wants to put life 
in the dry bones. He wants to tell you Baptists, you need to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. He wants to tell you Methodists, you need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. He wants to tell the Catholics, he wants to tell the Lutherans, he wants to tell you, tear down those denominational walls, throw away that uh, textbook, throw away your discipline, your book of discipline, and open the Bible, and let the Bible be your book of discipline. Obey the word of God. God is saying, hear ye, hear ye, hear the word of the Lord. Son of man, can these bones live? Can the church in America live? We've got the mega church here and the mega church there. We've got <clears throat> first Baptist here, second Baptist there. God wants the church to come together. We've got church folks who look down on others. We've got uh, people who zoom past in their new big cars and don't look down on the poor. We've got a mess, ladies and gentlemen. And without power, with the devil's taken over the nation, taken over the nations while the church is playing their little self party thing. They're doing their own thing. They're doing their own little denominational thing. Jesus wants his body to rise up. Oh, you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And so let's look at some questions about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Satan has used this concept of the baptism of the Holy Ghost for centuries to cause confusion in the church. And because believers don't read the scripture, because a lot of you preachers out there don't read the scripture, and what you read you don't believe, you have helped make a mess. But God wants to do a new thing. He wants you to humble yourself. God said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sin. I'll heal their land. God wants some of you to turn from your wicked pride. Uh, some of you think that Oh, whatever you, what you teach is all right. You can ignore certain subjects like adultery, homosexuality. You can ignore greed. You can ignore hatred. You can ignore racism. I still am looking. I'm looking all over America. I want to see. I want to see white preachers stand up and say racism is a sin and tell their congregation stop hating blacks, stop hating Hispanics. I want to see some black preachers stand up in their pulpits and say, it's a sin to hate white people. We need to love one another. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting on some preachers to get some Holy Ghost guts and to stand in front of their congregations and tell them, I rebuke that spirit of racism. I rebuke, rebuke that spirit of discrimination. I rebuke that hatred. And, and let's get together. Let's love our brothers and sisters, no matter who they are. I'm waiting, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Pardon me. I'm fired up. I'm waiting, ladies and gentlemen, to see this happen. And I believe it's going to happen. You see, God did not make the church black or the church white. There should not be a black church and a white church or Hispanic church. There ought to be the church of the Lord Jesus Christ where we love one another, where we work together, where we join hands together, where we praise God together, where we magnify the name of the Lord. And together, as we join together, as we fit together, as Christ's purpose, his church, as we fit together and get filled with the Holy Ghost, we'll stop all this stuff that has been grieving the spirit of the living God. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been grieving the spirit of God in this nation and in nations for centuries. Uh, racism. Uh, some people think they're better than others or, or this congregation thinks they're better than others. God is no respecter of persons, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus died for all. And when the church repents, when the church hears the word of the Lord and repents, there's going to be a change. We can put the devil on the run. We can put the devil on the run by the way we love one another. But until that time comes, look at the church, a valley of dry bones, everybody doing their own thing. Some of you think you're sharp. Some of you think you're hot. 
Some of you think you got a, a hot thing going, but Jesus said, you're, you're lukewarm. You're not hot, nor are you cold. I'll spew you out of my mouth. And so we all need to repent. We all need to humble ourselves. We all need to open our Bibles and read the word of God. And we all ought to seek, I say we all ought to seek the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I can't see how you can try to uh, uh, live the Christian life and, and, and be successful and to honor God without the Holy Ghost. Uh, some of you preachers need to repent. Some of you pastors need to repent. Some of you even told me, Pastor Carter, you can come here and preach, but don't bring that Holy Ghost mess. You need to repent for blaspheming the Holy Spirit. You need to repent for throwing a uh, 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 dung in the face of God. You need to repent for your words that you have condemned the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one God has sent to preserve the church, to preserve this world. We're the salt of the earth. We're the light of the world. And if you reject the Holy Spirit, ladies and gentlemen, you're rejecting Jesus Christ. So we need to humble ourselves. We need to repent. We need to get into the Bible. We need to get back to basics and read what the word of God says and do what God says do. You don't want to miss next week, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be fasting and praying that people get baptized, get filled with the Holy Ghost. God is going to do it. I'm going to preach the word. The Holy Spirit is going to fill you. So you make sure you're tuned in. But in the meantime, you need this foundational message this week. You need this foundational message. Question number one, does every Christian have the Holy Spirit inside of them? The answer is yes. Yes. From the moment you're born again, the Holy Spirit enters into your body to take up resonance. Yes. Everyone who confesses Jesus Christ to be Savior and Lord has the Holy Spirit inside of them. Ladies and gentlemen, when you're born again, the Holy Spirit of God resides in your spirit and becomes one with your spirit. Here's the problem. A lot of people have not been taught that the Holy Spirit resides in them and that uh, God's Spirit comes to to guide you. You see, it's the spirit of man that leads man to sin. It's the spirit of man that desires sin. But the Holy Spirit is the one who sent to guide us into all truth. And every believer, every born again person has the Holy Spirit. That's the only way you can be born again. By the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit births you into the church. Question, does the Holy Spirit baptize us in the body of Christ? Yes, yes. The scripture says in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, for we are all baptized by one spirit into one body. So, hey, Lutherans, hey, Episcopalians, hey, CMEs, hey, AMEs, hey, Southern Baptists, hey, hey Northern Baptists, stop all the dissension, stop all the fighting. We're all baptized into one body. We're all baptized by one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. You can't be born again without the Holy Spirit birthing you into the body of Christ, ladies and gentlemen. We're all born into the body of Christ. You see, until a person is born again, that person is dead. I don't care how rich you are, how educated you are, how slick you are, you are dead. God is not your father. Until you're born again, the devil is your father. I don't care, you can be the president of the United States. You can be the CEO of a great uh, financial empire. But if you don't have the spirit of God in you, you're dead and you're going to go to hell. But God doesn't want you to go to hell. He wants you to go to heaven. And the only way to get to heaven is not by going to church, not by praying the rosary, not by spend, spending a whole lot of money, not by giving uh, uh, millions of dollars to charity. No, no, no. You must be born again. And the only way you can be born again is by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit 
gives us the new birth based on what Christ did on Calvary. So when you put your trust in the Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that Jesus died for your sins, when you put your trust in the Lord, the Holy Spirit baptizes you into the church, the body of Christ. And there is no special baptism for white folks, no special baptism for black folks, no special baptism for Baptists, no special Baptist baptism for the Methodists. So there's nobody in the body of Christ better than any other. Your skin might be light and your hair might be wavy, but you're no better than us with dark skin and kinky hair. So we need to humble ourselves and look at the word of God and accept one another with love and be grateful to God for the gift, <clears throat> for the gift of salvation. A lot of pollen down here in Lithonia, Georgia. But hallelujah, we have authority over that, praise God. And so does the Holy Spirit baptize us in the body of Christ? When a person is born again, the Holy Spirit immerses them, baptizes them in the body of Christ as a family. So we become one family. We, No matter what color our skin, no matter where we come from, what side of the tracks we're on, when we are born again, the Holy Spirit baptizes us into one family. Africans, Asians, Europeans, North Americans, uh, Native Americans, Central Americans, South Americans, a, uh, wherever you're from. When you believe in Jesus Christ, you're baptized into one family. Question, does Jesus baptize us in the Holy Spirit? Yes, yes, yes. He told us, he told his disciples, tarry you in Jerusalem for the power wait on the power. Jesus said before he ascended into heaven, he said, don't leave Jerusalem without the power. You see a lot of people, a lot of churches trying to operate without power. You're, you're, they're trying to operate on their name. They're trying to operate on the largeness of their ministry. They want to operate on their budget. They want to operate on numbers of people. They want to operate on the numbers of cars in the parking lot. But these don't mean a thing. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you don't have any power. You can fool some of the people some of the time, but not all the people all the time. And you can't fool God. Does Jesus baptize us in the Holy Spirit? Yes, yes, yes. John saw Jesus coming when John was baptizing in the Jordan. And he said, behold, the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. Jesus walked up to John and said, John, baptize me. John said, Lord, I, I ought to be baptized by you. Jesus said, suffer that to be right now, but go ahead and baptize me. And Jesus said, you, you're going to receive power. You're going to receive power. He told his disciples, you're going to receive power after which the Holy Ghost is come. So later he said, wait in Jerusalem. Wait for the power. Wait for the power. Ladies and gentlemen, don't wait until the deacons meeting. Don't wait until the trustees meeting. Don't wait until the stewards meeting. Don't wait until the pastor hits the lottery. That's not the power we're talking about because that kind of power will not succeed. Ladies and gentlemen, to change people's lives and to do the work that God has called us to do, we need the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, go ye into all the world preaching this gospel. He said, whoever, uh, whatsoever things you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever things you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. He said, you shall receive power after which the Holy Ghost is come. Ladies and gentlemen, why are you denying God the power in your life? Your good looks are not going to uh, convince people. Your, your persuasive uh, looks are not going to persuade people. You might wink your eye at some ladies, preacher, and, and you have them acting silly and giggly, but you don't have any power. In order to do the work of God, you need the Holy Ghost. I need the Holy Ghost. I need you, Holy Spirit. I cannot make it without you.
and God has made the Holy Spirit available to every one of us. Well, preacher, can I receive the Holy Ghost if I'm not saved? No, 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 you can't. The Holy Ghost is only for those who are saved, who have accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. God is not going to give his power to somebody who worships Buddha. God's not going to give his power to somebody who worships Muhammad. God is not stupid. God's going to give his power to those who receive his son, Jesus Christ, as Savior and Lord. God's going to give his power to them. So you must be born again. Well, how can I get born again, preacher? It's simple. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. The scripture says that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Here's another question. Very important question. Is there a clear difference in the Bible between A, receiving the Holy Spirit in your spirit when you're born again? And B, being filled, baptized with the Holy Spirit in your soul and body? And C, being refilled? Ladies and gentlemen, this is a three-part question. Is there any clear difference in the Bible concerning Receiving the Holy Spirit when you're born again. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you're born again. Is there any clear difference in the Bible about being filled, baptized with the Holy Spirit in your soul and body? Yes. The Bible tells us, and be not drunk with wine in which is excess, but be filled with the Holy Ghost, Ephesians 5, 18. Is there any clear difference in the Bible concerning being refilled? Ladies and gentlemen, do I, if I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, do I need a refill? Yes, the answer is yes, yes, yes. And so many people have, have been teaching ignorantly. They got baptized in the Holy Ghost 30 years ago and they don't seek God for a refilling. And that's why you let lust in your life and immorality. That's why uh, you got spirit-filled, tongue-talking people, uh, men married to men, women married to women. You've got all kinds of adultery and lust and, and abominable things going on in the church. And yet you're speaking in tongues. You're laying hands on the sick. You got filled with the Holy Ghost. You've got your own prayer language. So Satan has taken this baptism of the Holy Spirit. He's run with it and he's caused confusion. And he's got a lot of people thinking that since you got filled with the Holy Ghost, you got it all. No, you don't have it all. You need to get filled every day, every day. You need to take your bucket and go out to the well and dip your bucket in the well. Every day you ought to ask the Holy Spirit, Rise up in me, Holy Spirit, like rivers of living water. Uh, every day, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes you might wake up sick and you've got to prime the pump. You've got to start praising God and asking the Holy Spirit, rise up in me, fill me again. Cast this sickness out of my body. Ladies and gentlemen, you can get filled with the Holy Ghost and you can lay hands on yourself and heal yourself in the name of Jesus by the authority of the name of Jesus. You can do that when you get baptized with the Holy Ghost. But ladies and gentlemen, if you're depending on one filling, if you're depending on one filling, that filling you got when you went to the altar in 1950 and you uh, uh, felt something come over you, you began praying in an unknown tongue and you haven't been studying your scripture since then, you've been operating on that filling, you need to go to the fountain. You need to go to the well. You need to go to Kneebone Station. You need to fast and pray. You need to ask the Lord to fill you again and again. And then you need to read the book of Acts. When you read the book of Acts, ladies and gentlemen, you'll see that those disciples got filled again and again and again and again. What happened on the day of Pentecost, according to Acts 2 and 1, the Holy Spirit fell upon the church and, and, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. 
They began speaking in tongues. They began prophesying. In other words, they began speaking in unknown languages and in their own languages. They began worshiping God and praising God. And the power of God fell from heaven like never before. And ladies and gentlemen, we see in chapter four of Acts how they got filled again. When Peter got set free from prison, the church rejoiced at the great power of God to deliver Peter. They began praising God and they got filled again. And then we see throughout the book of Acts from time to time that they got filled again and again. So the Bible teaches us we need to get filled again and again every day, ladies and gentlemen. You ought to ask the Holy Spirit to fill you, fill you. Because if you don't let the Holy Spirit fill you, pride will fill you. Pride will fill you. Don't let the proud spirit take over. Don't let that religious spirit take over. Just because you cast out demons yesterday and people tell, told you you got the power of God, you're somebody special. Don't let that pride fill you. Need to repent. And the next day and the next day and the next day, ask the Holy Spirit to rise up in you and give the glory and honor to God. God said, no flesh shall touch my glory. No, he's not going to share his glory with anybody. And when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, don't think you've got it, ladies and gentlemen. God will equip you. He wants to equip you to do his will. When he fills you with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, he wants you to do something for his sake. He wants you to go and do what he says do. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't tell you the number of pe people I know who are baptized in the Holy Ghost. I've led a lot of people in the Holy Ghost baptism, and they're sitting around now as though they don't even know Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't tell you the number of people who have gotten so caught up in proud pride. You can't even teach them anything. I've got pastors who won't even listen to this kind of message. You can't because they know everything. They know everything. They don't, and they don't want you to know everything. They don't want you to know this. But ladies and gentlemen, you get into your word. You look at Ezekiel 37, see yourself as a dry bone, make up your mind. I'm not going to be a dry bone. I'm going to come alive and then make up your mind. You're not going to be a racist. You're not going to be uh, 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 separated from other people. You're not going to separate yourself from the body of Christ. You're going to work within uh, God's kingdom. You're going to do what God says do. You're not going to hate people. You're not going to harbor bitterness in your heart. Ladies and gentlemen, I know spirit-filled people who are filled with bitterness. And bitterness and the Holy Ghost cannot stay in the same place. It's your choice. It's your choice. You can be God's man or woman, or you can be bitter. You can be angry. You can keep on being angry. And if you keep on being angry and, and dishonoring God and not allowing the Holy Spirit to, to work in your life, I don't care who you are, how much Holy Ghost you got. If, if you d let anger dwell in you and bitterness dwell in you, you're going to bust hell wide open. You need to repent, ladies and gentlemen. You need to repent. I need to repent. The scripture says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, God won't even hear me. And a lot of you tongue talkers out there, a lot of you uh, prophets, a lot of you preachers, you've got bitterness in your spirit. You're angry and you're racist. you racist out there. You folks who hate black folks, you folks who hate white folks, you need to repent. You need to repent and call upon the name of the Lord. I don't care what who you are, preacher, how big your name is. I don't care how big your church is. If you hate black people, you're 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 a sick sinner and you're headed to hell and God is not going to let you in with bitterness in your heart. Why? Because the scripture says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, he won't even hear me. Repent now. Repent now. Repent now. Repent now. And I'm talking to you tongue talkers who have bitterness and hatred in your heart. Repent now and start loving on people. You, uh, you'll stand, oh, you, you're so proud, you're going to stand before God. You just know God ain't going to let you miss heaven. You're going to say, but God, didn't I cast out demons in your name? I laid hands on the sick. I visited hospitals. I built churches. Yeah, but you were a racist and you hated black people. You were a racist. You hated white people. 
you had hatred in your heart and you refused to repent. Depart from me. I never knew you. Ladies and gentlemen, don't let that sad day be in your destiny. Don't let that sad day get filled with the Holy Spirit and humble yourself and let the Spirit of God lead you. If the Spirit of God reveals to you you're a racist, then you need to repent. Tell God, yes, God, I'm a racist. I'm just a dry bone racist. I'm just a no good, low down, dry bone racist. Forgive me. Forgive me. Heal me. Deliver me. And God will forgive you. He'll deliver you. And he'll put power in you. Or if, if you know you're, you're a homosexual or, or, or you're a lesbian and you sleep with other women, you can speak in tongues. You can be the pastor of the church. But if you're sleeping with another woman, it's an abomination. And you think God's going to let you into heaven knowing that you know that you've been living this life in defiance of God, in defiance of the Holy Spirit. You need to repent right now. Confess it to God. Ask God, Lord, forgive me. Deliver me. And then get out of it. Get out of it. Turn from your sins. Ladies and gentlemen, turn from your sins. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about let's stop playing church. Let's stop playing these games with God. The Holy Spirit peeps under every cover. He shines a light in every dark place. He's, he's sharper than any two-edged sword. He even knows the thoughts and intents of the heart. He separates the bone from the marrow. So he knows you. You might fool people, but the Holy Spirit knows you. And God sent him to guide you to do the will of God. Ladies and gentlemen, that proud spirit. Some of you don't like this kind of preaching because it goes against your grain. But you need to humble yourself. Repent. Be teachable. Ask God, give me a teachable spirit. Give me a teachable spirit. Here's another question. we take a few more. Why is being drunk such a parallel to being filled with the Holy Spirit? The Bible tells us in Ephesians 5, 18, and be not drunk with wine and which is excess, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, he tells us don't get drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, drunks are more transparent. Drunks are more confident. Drunks are more verbal. Drunks are more eager to sing. Drunks are more affectionate. Drunks uh, are more released from stress. And so, and there are other characteristics of a drunk. And so the Bible compares being filled with the Holy Ghost with being drunk. Be transparent. Stop being a phony. Be more confident. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you can do all things that the Lord has called you to do. Be more verbal. Oh, you can preach. You can prophesy. You can pray in tongues. You can praise God. Be more eager to sing praises to God. Be like a drunk. Drunks are, you, you see a drunk? When a drunk walks in the church, first thing he wants to do is go and get that mic. Give me the microphone. I want to sing a song. Then a drunk will start, I want to sing a song dedicated to my mama. The first thing a drunk wants to do is a sing song. When I used to be uh, uh, back in my college days, we'd get to drinking, acting crazy. We'd all get a little group, and then we'd start singing. Everybody likes to sing when they're drunk. Drunks are more affectionate. Drunks think, drunks think they think they're lovers. And drunks have no stress. And under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, ladies and gentlemen, there's no stress. Some of you are stressed out because you're trying to operate in pride. You can't operate in pride. You need the Holy Ghost. Jesus has already sent the Holy Spirit to us. Your problem is you just won't sign for the package. The package has already been delivered to you. All you got to do is sign for the package and receive it and open it and operate in it. God has already sent his spirit. God has sent everything we need. So if you've been taught by some pastor 
about the Holy Ghost. And he's negative about speaking in tongues. Well, see, that's an ignorant pastor. Everybody doesn't speak in tongues. All the pastor has to do is teach you from 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14. Everybody doesn't lay hands on the sick. Everybody doesn't operate in, 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 in certain gifts. The Holy Spirit gives gifts as he chooses. So read your Bible. Go and read 1 Corinthians 12, 13 to 14 about the gifts of the Spirit, how to operate in the Spirit. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, but I have bitterness and anger in my heart, I'm just a noisemaker. The scripture tells us that if I speak in tongues, I can sing in tongues, I can cut CDs in tongues. But if I have anger and bitterness in my heart, if I hate blacks, if I hate whites, if I hate women, if I hate men, if, I, if I'm a pedophile, I'm just a noisemaker. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible makes it so plain, so plain. What happened at the day of Pentecost? Ladies and gentlemen, at the day of Pentecost, according to the scripture, all were filled with the Holy Ghost. You had believers there from all over the world. All were filled with the Holy Ghost. All began speaking in unknown tongues, speaking languages they had never heard before. All were prophesying. What's prophesying mean? Speaking the word of God, rejoicing in the word of God, speaking the word of God. Praise God. And so we need the study of scripture. I want you to study your scriptures this week. Study the book of Acts. The true title for the book of Acts is the Acts of the Holy Spirit in the lives of the apostles. It's not the Acts of the apostles. It's the Acts of the Holy Spirit in the lives of the apostles. Let the Holy Spirit come alive in you. I want you this week, ask the Lord, Lord, baptize me in the Holy Spirit. Come next week expecting to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Some of you will, be, will, will begin speaking in tongues. Others will not. All do not speak in tongues. Some of you will, will prophesy, meaning you speak in English or whatever your native language is. Some of you, God will make into healers. You'll be able to lay your hands on the sick. They'll recover. Some of you will be able to cast demons out of people's lives, out of their households. Okay? And the Spirit gives gifts as he chooses. But before the Spirit can give you gifts, he wants you to receive him. Welcome the Holy Spirit. Just as you by faith. Receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. By faith, receive the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, I receive you. I want you. Seek the Holy Spirit and receive. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll continue with this next week. I want you to come expecting. If you have any questions this week, ask me. Give me a call. 404-205-1101. Or send me an email, LeroyCarter69 at yahoo.com. We're going to get ready next week. We're believing God that the power is going to fall in your life. And if you've already been filled with the Holy Ghost, we want you to get your bucket. Go back to the well. Get that bucket filled again. Amen. Get that bucket filled again. We need to be filled every day, every day. Praise God. Let me pray with you right now. Father God, we thank you. We worship you. We love you. We honor you. We adore you. We exalt you. You are the mighty God. Lord, you love us so much that you gave your only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for paying the price for our salvation. Now, Lord, you also have more for us. You want to give us more. And Lord, we've been denying you and we've been rejecting you. Now, God, we repent. We repent. We repent, God. I repent on behalf of the church, God. Help the church to, to seek the Holy Spirit, to ask for him. Holy Spirit, we have been denying you. 
Jesus sent you into into the world and to the earth to to guide us into completing the work of the kingdom. And we've denied you. Forgive us. Forgive us, Holy Spirit. Forgive us for grieving you. We repent now, Lord. Prepare the people. Prepare us. We want to be filled. We want to be filled. Fill us again and again and again. We thank you, Father, and we bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Praise God. Praise God. Facebook family, uh, we're going to stop the broadcast, but you can hit me up on Facebook. I'll be glad to answer your questions. Praise God. Be so glad to answer your questions. God bless you. And then our go to meet me family. I'm so glad to see you all. David, so glad to see you. So glad to see so many people. Praise God. Christy, praise God. Uh, Ryan, hey, Ryan. And and uh, Roger, and hey, Wes, and so many others. Man, uh, I know I'm going to get in trouble because I started calling names. But you all have a blessed day. A blessed day. And we're going to stop the recording now. But if any of you have any questions,